Alright, so what I want to show you today is something really cool. How to backtest using stuff for FX. Like, you know, it's a platform that I really like. Platform I've been using for a long time to backtest, almost two years ago. And I've done a video on that before, but it was long, it was complex. And I want to really kind of do a guide here for you on how to use it to backtest really well. It's going to simplify your backtest for sure. It's going to save you a lot of time, of course. Let's jump right in, and I'll show you how that works, how to install it, how to get it to work. And it's one of the cheapest backtesting software. Of course, there are some free out there, but this one is really good, and it's like $99. So if you want to get it, the link's going to be in the description below. The first link will be there. You can just get it there if you want to use it. Now, here I have a brand new MT4 that I've created for this video here. If you go here on the left side, we have a list of expert advisors. And in between that list, we have software effects is the last one. So what you can do is really simple. You just take it and you drag it to your chart. So you take it, click, and you drag it anywhere on your chart. Now you're gonna have this popping up over here, the version, the, the, the website and everything around. Uh, what you wanna care about here is, this is all good. You wanna care about here your input because you have to enter your email that you use to purchase the software and your activation code. So now if you get to this point where you see this menu popping up over here, I like guess here, then that means you've done it right. Now what we'll do, is we can do a new simulation. I want to show you step by step how that works out when you do something new. So you go here, you go new. At the top here is when you select your provider of data when you back this. So you have a few different ones here. MT4 is really limited, or MetaTrader is limited. So you go, you can go to the gas copy or through FX, whichever you prefer is fine. And this one, now you, cho you choose your pair. Now here you only have two pairs because these are pairs we've downloaded so far. If you want to have more pairs, you go back here, you go into data center, and that's where you can download data for any pair you want with the different kind of provider here of data. So you could say, for example, you want to download data for, I don't know, UAD, for example, we'll just do that one, to download. Then it's going to ask you to select how much data you want. Uh, let's just say we do, I don't know, one, yeah, that's what we have, we do one here, we do download. It's going to download this data. It's going to take a bit of time, so maybe I won't do it here because it's not really fast, but that's fine. Uh, so, yeah. Now you close this one, you go back to a new simulation, and you go here to your pair or data you've downloaded before. This one here we have from 2016. This one we have less, of course, so we can choose whichever you want. Then we choose when to start the backtest, when to end the backtest. If you do nothing, it's going to end whenever you have no data. Account currency. Again, you can change this based on the data you download. Uh, starting balance, say 10,000 is fine. Then time on the chart, if you're going to have a New York close on your chart, you can select that here. I prefer that, but it's up to you. Uh, that will mean that, let's say, your daily chart, you can all, you can all on a daily chart close at 5 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. New York, compared to um, 12, like, like midnight New York. If you're winding a lot, this when you want to, if you t do a backtest and you want to go back in your backtest to kind of maybe modify some trades, that's, you, you have to check this. I recommend you do it because sometimes you can miss trades that you didn't see first. You want to take them anyway. So you go back and take them. That's a really good thing. Here we have pip size. So the, pip, the, the size of a pip, that, that's good. You leave it like that. Lot size. Uh, I think that's going to be the normal one. So that's cool. Leverage, so you can choose your leverage on the account because you want to do 100 or you want to do 50 or 20 or whatever. It won't affect a lot except you'll be able to, let, to take less trades together at the same time, but that's not a big deal. Then the spread, it's going to be real. It's going to vary based on the data of the spread that they have. That's good. Or you can be fixed and put it higher if you want to make it more like tough if you want when you back this. Commission per lot, so if, you, if, you, if your broker has a commission that they charge you per lot or per trade, you can check this. And you'll put here what's the commission per, per lot that you trade. Uh, and then that's going to allow you to kind of simulate the commission as well and take it into account when you do your backtest. Now here we have initial history on chart. So how many days when you load the chart and when you don't trade it yet, how many days you want to have in the past. I recommend you put this more, especially if you look at, let's say, zones. You want to draw some zones in the chart. You need that kind of data in the past to, to be able to draw your zones. Otherwise, you can always just put no data here. And then when you get to trade on your backtesting, you can like simulate a few days or months of data first to get to your zones. But I recommend you do this to, I don't know, say like, whatever you prefer. I'll do 30 days. Then 
once we've done that, we can do a start simulation over here. And now we get this menu there. Okay, this menu is really confusing at first. Uh, yeah, I should make it bigger, it's pointless. But yeah, this menu is really confusing at first because there's many options there. And you'll see no chart ha opening here, so that can be really confusing. Now, what we have to do is we have to actually open our charts and decide which charts we want to open. So you go here to charts. And uh, then you have a menu, you see you have no chart. So now you see here, you can open different charts. I do standard chart. These will be like standard candlesticks chart. Then you choose your period, M1 being uh, one minute, and M5 and so on. Then daily, weekly, monthly, let's just do a daily. Okay, then how many bars, that's fine. We just do add. Then we have a chart over here. We have to actually open it, so we can open it there. As you see, we have some data in the past, and our chart looks bad, but that's fine. We'll, we'll fix it after. Now, let's say that you want to have a daily chart, but also like a one-hour chart to do your backtest. So we'll go back over here. We'll choose a one-hour chart, and we'll do add. And we'll do with this one. We'll do open again. Now we have a one hour chart and a daily chart. Let me just close this over here. It's going to be easier. Okay, now we'll do close. We have enough of these charts open. And if you want to kind of change between them, they're, they're, they're here at the bottom. So you can change easily between these charts. You can also like re resize them if you want. Uh, just don't close this one over here. This one is the one that you have to keep open when you do your back test with the, soft, with the fork simulator chart. So that's fine. Uh, these are all other charts we don't really need. So you can, you can resize this however you want. Put one chart over here, let's say, and then one chart over there, or whatever you prefer. Okay, it's totally fine. I like to like put it, let's say, half. So half a chart here. And then let's see the other half of the screen will be this chart. Okay, that, that, that works well for me. That could be different for you. So now we have this open. We have our chart, we can do our back this. Except our chart looks really bad. So what I could do is, is I like to create a template that I like, like a color of chart I like, and I'll save it. So now I can just go back here, reopen it, template, and I go to default, and then I do here, template, and I go to default, and I reopen these charts like this. And that, that's kind of cool to kind of save the template that you have. Now we can start our back test. We have some data in the past, we are good to go. And we can add, of course, indicators, anything you want to add to it, that's totally fine. Now, there's a few more things you have to think about. So we have the news here that we can stimulate. Uh, we have downloaded it before, so I didn't download it before in Data Center. I won't need it. I really don't, don't care about it. Here's sessions. We can see what sessions we are in right now. So now it will be midnight. We are in, in between sessions, let's say. But as you go forward with your back test, you'll see this happening and showing you different sessions. So if we just kind of move the bars like this, you'll see this. Actually, yeah, here we'll move a daily chart. Let me go back on a one-hour chart. So the chart you click on is going to be the chart that moves forward. Okay, or actually over here. So here's daily. We move the daily chart. Here we change to one one hour. We we'll move the one hour chart. Let's see now the hours move. Now we are in Sydney and Tokyo. Then we change more. Then we we'll get to all oh, London. Then we we'll get to New York over here. So that gives you a good idea of like when you trade, which session you're in. Of course, you can take this here and put it smaller if you want to kind of keep it there. And that's cool to have. Now the other thing that's really re interesting is so let's say we go here. And we start to just like take trades. Let's say I'm here. I want to do, uh, I want to do like a buy. You have a buy market, buy pending, so you can buy stop, buy limit. You have uh, these presets. These this is where you you, you want to put a typical trailing stop or a typical auto break even for your stop when price reaches, let's say 50 pip in profit, then move stop loss to break even, so zero pips, or to let's say five pips in profit. Okay. So you would, this would make it that you have a break-even automatic, which is pretty cool. But I, I don't use this personally myself. Trailing stop, you can do that too. Trust stop at X number of pips. So when price gets X pip in favor, uh, yeah, so this one. When the order is X pip in profit, move the, the stop to this number of pips. So you can do that if you want. And then you have your account. So this is going to be your PNL. Then you can save here your backtest. So let's say you do a backtest one day and then you're tired of it and you want to go do something else and come back later. You can just save simulation. You'll save it in, on your computer somewhere, wherever you want. And you'll be able to go back to it later. That's really cool to have. That's really nice. If you want to export to a report, we'll do this after because I'll show you how it works later. 
Okay, so what I was saying with the taking trades here is that let's say you go here and you want to take a trade. Let's say you want to do like a buy market. So you just go buy. Now it's a mess because you have to like place your stop loss. So you have to modify your order and everything around and it's just complicated to do. So you have your buy over here but you have no stop loss. So you would have to go back to your here trade history and then you have to like add a stop loss over there. Okay, so you would have to move your stop loss somewhere. Then pips from entry, you change this like let's say 50 pips. It's just really hard to do, right? And then you take profit to do the same thing. You have to do here, you go like let's say 100 pip, something from entry, or you can do a price. Now, what I, what I really like about this this platform here, and then let's let's just say that this will move forward. Okay, then you get stopped out. Now, what I like about, about this platform is that they have a function called visual mode. And what that means is when you do when you go to here placing an order, okay, you can do a buy or sell or whatever, or pending or market. It's totally fun. Let's say you do a buy. It's gonna show you this this window here that and, and these lines in the chart where the blue line here is your take profit. You can put whoever you want. Uh this line over here is your stop loss, the red one. And then we did market, so we would ju just have to buy at this price. Okay, so you do accept. And now you can like really like, put these easily on the chart with, with this. Uh, then we go forward, so I'm doing anything, so it doesn't really matter. I'll be stopped out probably on this trade, cool. Now if we do a pending one, we'll have the same, let's say we do a pending uh, sell limit. Actually sell, now we have to do sell stop, because we want to go build, build the price. Sell stop. So stop plus is here, we move it right there, we put it over here. Uh, then our entry will be here. Let's say I want to enter it there. We do the candlestick. Then our here take profit will be further. So I'm not sure if I can maybe zoom out something to be able to put it. There we go. Take profit here, for example. Okay, and now you can see here your reward to risk is 1.03, which means that your risk to reward is 0.97. And then you see the data here for your, for your stop loss. That's pretty cool. You do accept. And then we can go and see that trade unfold. That's much easier to place in the chart like this because it's all there, it's all visual, and I definitely like this better. Now let's see we're tired of moving with this one hour chart because it's too long. We can go here on the daily chart, change it to daily chart, and then we do next bar, next bar, it's gonna move on, on a daily chart. That's easier. And that's so we had a break even here trigger that we set up before. So that works really well. I think that I, I really like this platform here, it's pretty good to do. Uh, then you have some templates, which is something I never use much. You can use them, use them if you want, of course. Then we have some here if you want to delete some trades. Uh, delete all your trades open, you can do that too. Now, if we go into trades, we can see our close trades over here. Uh, so what you can do is you can export these to Excel. But the other thing you can do is you can go here into save. You can save your back test, like we said, or you can export 24 reporting if it already exists. That's cool. The graph. Okay. Now let me go here on my desktop. So what we have is we have one picture and we have one, one HTML file. So it looks like this when you open it. You have here your summary, you have Fox Simulator, your pair, have the trades open, and the graph over here. Okay. Now this thing you can use it to see data more in depth on to one page. You can share it with maybe investors or people that, that you trade for, that kind of stuff. You can do a lot with this. That's pretty more in depth. Okay, and you'll see more, more data over here. Then just with the Excel, so you have your list of trades, you have your open trades, whatever, depending on what time you take this on, and you have your data here. So profit trade, you have your uh, percentage of, of winning trades, 33% over here, losing percentage, 66%. Now, we, of course, we only have like three trades, but when you get more trades, this is definitely more valuable. You see your maximum drawdown, maximum consecutive wins, all that stuff. So that's really good to, to use and to kind of get some more data on. And that's how this works. Also, one thing I didn't point out yet is that you can modify here your risk per trade. Okay, it's pretty cool. You can do your risk being a fixed lot or a risk percent. So let's say 1% or you can do a risk dollar. Let's say $100. And you can change this however you want. That's, that's pretty cool. It's so going to adjust based on your account size and it's going to make it yeah, like the, the same one percent as you go, and that's that's cool to have. I'll leave the link below the description, and I'll catch you pretty soon. Ciao.